Hello, I'm Brad Becker. Welcome to Red Barn Radio. This is season number 19 of Red Barn Radio, and tonight is show number 707. <laughs> Red Barn Radio, Roots Music Southern Style. To keep our staff and our musical guests safe, we will continue to abide by state and local guidelines concerning cleanliness and personal protective equipment. For now, our Wednesday performances will take place without a live in-studio audience. This evening, we bring to the Red Barn stage Britton Patrick Morgan, a great singer-songwriter who hails from Louisville, Kentucky. Welcome Britton Patrick Morgan to Red Barn Radio. About a mile from me Where the barges tie There stands a mighty earth-moving machine Lord, it stands 12 stories high. Well, the ground it can eat, it's a sight. It can rip out a quarter mile overnight. My, my.
Well, they can eat up the ground and they can poison your water and they can bleed the people and they can do all these things it's a fact but they cannot put them back way down the green river about a mile from me thank you a song called Green River. Good evening, and welcome to Red Barn Radio. Down. Wherever in the world you're listening, welcome to the music of Kentucky. Thanks to WEKU, Red Barn Radio's official radio partner, NPR for Central and Eastern Kentucky. Listen online at WEKU.org. Red Barn Radio is supported by Visit Lex, Lexington, Kentucky's Convention and Visitors Bureau. More information on what Lexington has to offer is at visitlex.com. LexArts, Lexington, Kentucky's Arts Council, creating a great American city inspired by the arts. Follow Red Barn Radio on Twitter and hopefully like us on Facebook. Here's the host of Red Barn Radio to tell us more about tonight's performers. On the Red Barn stage tonight is Britton Patrick Morgan. Britton was born in Kentucky and traces his deep family roots to the hills and small towns of eastern Kentucky's coal country. Britton is a talented songwriter, multi-instrumentalist, singer, and session artist, and we are thrilled to have him on the program today. Welcome back to the Red Barn stage, Britton Patrick Morgan. Yeah, thanks for having me. Thank you. Thank you. So my name is Britton, and I'm named after my great-grandfather, who comes from Harlan, Kentucky, and I wrote this song about a little place just up river, up the Cumberland River from Harlan. This is called Baxter, Kentucky. right there watching this story be retold to 
till she decides to rise up and swallow this town. And the people cry to God as they climb to higher ground. Where the tombstones stare all wet and cold and silently say, I told you so. at the quick stop store and there's a blood moon on the rise the air is heavy and the bugs are singing it's the day before the 4th of July FedEx driver, he is lost. All he knows it's the Cumberland. He just crossed. Thank y'all. Little little song about Baxter, Kentucky there. This, uh, this next song, uh, I was in Nashville and was needing to kill some time, so I went to my favorite coffee shop over in East Nashville. I hadn't been there in a while, but it's like, it's got the best coffee, uh, ugly mugs. And I'm sitting there and like the place is totally packed. And I kind of just wrote this song pretty quick, kind of like a street scene, uh, looking around and watching everything going on. And it was uh, pretty inspiring. So this is called Ugly Mug Blues. Take these plates out to table four To the Buddhist monks playing Angry Birds And they ain't keeping score, oh my, my there's some mud in your eye. And when I get home, I want to throw away my phone. My downstairs neighbor walks the dogs every day. Up and down the block, she goes both ways for the pay. And that's all I'm going to say. But I sure do like the view You should see her new tattoo shoes put them on the bank I got to learn and to swim the Cumberland Blues 
And I'm waiting on the muse. Lord, I got plenty of time. Cause I'm looking for the muse. Well, I got plenty of time. Cause I'm always looking and searching and listening for the muse. Thank you all. Thank you. Welcome, one and all, to Red Barn Radio. Our guest this evening is Britton Patrick Morgan. He's a writer and multi-instrumentalist and producer and singer who uh, draws humbly and heavily from the spiritual connection between people and place and time. He's um, got some music out you can, you can find in 2018. He released his debut album, High Lonesome Throne, and uh, he's done a lot of production. He's lived uh, an interesting life thus far and uh, does a lot of interesting collaborations with folks, too. So we're looking forward to uh, talking uh, talking with you, Britton. Great to have you here and uh, love your first tunes. Well, thanks. Thanks for having me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, all right. So why don't we start by going back to your, uh, say, maybe preteen years. Uh, could you talk to us about where you uh, where you grew up? Yeah, grew up in Louisville. Um, Got two older sisters. Um, my granddad was a huge influence on me musically, my mom's dad. He, uh, his mother was actually Jane McCoy, related to the infamous Hatfields. And oh, McCoy's. yeah. Yeah. She was, um, I believe, Randolph McCoy's niece. But he learned a lot of old-timey music from her and growing up on the farm. And so when I was young, I was really lucky to have him around. He taught me how to play with uh, with like a kind of a frailing style of guitar. Uh -huh. um, he didn't hardly ever use a pick. And uh, he was just very musical and he would get excited and say he was going to play on TV and I'd be like, oh, grandpa's going to be on TV. And then he would just go sit on the TV and play. So, uh, but yeah, he's he was a he was a great influence and, and taught me an awful lot of stuff musically that uh, that sticks with me today. You know, it's kind of a lineage that I'm, I'm fortunate to have. Did you grow up in a sort of a rural setting? You mentioned a farm. Were you actually uh, on a farm when no. you were growing up? No, I, I did not. I grew up in just a regular house, uh, <laughs> pretty much uh, suburbs, I guess you'd call it. But yeah. all my relatives um, were pretty rural. Like we would, all the, the uh, holidays and Thanksgivings, Madison County, a lot of family from uh, Perry County and Owsley County. And, you know, I, I have uh, just a lot of, lot of mountain heritage through them and just stories that I used to sit and listen to from all of them. Huh. Um, and also got family from Muhlenberg County too. So we've kind of got the coal fields in the east and the coal fields in the west coming down. So what were you like as a little teenager? Um, well, when I hit about <laughs> 13, I went from really digging uh, you know, like acoustic music and stuff to getting into like Pink Floyd and uh, U2 and REM and all that. Uh, but I was pretty, I was a pretty good student and all that. I, I can't say that I was a troublemaker. I got in trouble a few times, but um, I wasn't, uh, I wasn't a hellion. <laughs> did you, did you, at, at what point in time did, did you, um, did you, I guess, feel like songwriting was something that you might find yourself doing was that later on or, or what did that happen early on as early as high school yeah you know i always um as young as i can remember i used to make up beats and stuff to like the windshield wipers flapping um so i've always just kind of had a a rhythm coming through me that that you know was musical and it wasn't until i got a little older um, probably into college I started really appreciating words mm. and I, I wrote uh, my first song uh, probably when I was 23 or so um, I'd actually gone on a like a vision quest thing with some uh, folks that were from Michigan an Indian tribe and the next day I went up to this overlook um, actually in East Tennessee and I sat there and wrote my first song so I guess it was a, a kind of a inspired by nature and and also just place and feeling that that brought it forth 
So what what is it that in in your life that brought you to that place at it was it at 23 that you went on that vision quest? Yeah, or, yeah, after right after uh, actually in the end of semester of college and then right after college I uh, worked for 3 years uh, in a very rural place off the grid. It was a uh, hostel for horseback riders and hikers and I lived there with uh, several uh, my partner at the time and several uh, several other couples and we she and I basically kind of ran the place but you could only get there by foot or horseback. Where was that? Uh, it's in the Big South Fork National River and Recreation Area. It's called Cherit Creek Lodge um, and it's a beautiful place if you ever want to go hiking and see some of the biggest arches there are go down there it's it's great it's very similar similar to Red River Gorge in the sandstone and topography but it's uh, in some ways bigger and less visited so it's it's a really cool place hmm. did you also did, did did I read that you also spent some time in Alaska I did yeah, yeah tell me uh, about that yeah I uh, actually was dating a woman from uh, Sitka Alaska and I'd heard tell of uh, how good the money was working on, in salmon. Ah. So I went up there with her and yeah, lived up there for a while. And I remember when I got my first paycheck, I was like, I'm never gonna leave here because it was mind blowing. But then when you went to the grocery <laughs> up there, you know, you could buy salmon for 50 cents and steaks were like $18. Uh -huh. So it was just the inverse of kind of what we have here. Sort of like buying a steak at Kroger during COVID. Yeah, <laughs> pretty You're much, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> But yeah, that was a really good time. Beautiful area, Southeast Alaska. Yeah, I haven't been back since, but I, I hope to one day. Well, I would think that probably the uh, grizzly bears were glad when you left. They, <laughs> Maybe man, so. Thank goodness that guy's out of here, man. <laughs> we, 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 we were no mass for him. I tried to keep my distance. I did see a few bears up there. Did you? Saw a wolverine too, which Ooh. they're, yeah. That's Apparently, a mean critter. Right? Yeah, the bears stay away from the wolverines. They've got, they've got big teeth, big claws there. They're vicious. Now, how, how big is a wolverine? I've only seen them sort of on the side of a boot, you know? I'm going to guess this one was probably, you know, large, larger than a Labrador, probably, you know, 95 pounds, maybe 100 pounds, something like that. Hmm. Low to the ground, uh, you know, ferocious stance, uh, big snoot with, with teeth. Huh. Yeah, I saw it on the beach one day walking, and it was not happy to have a boat nearby. So you were off the grid in what year? Roughly. Oh, that was the late 90s, uh, like maybe 97 through 2000, something like that. Okay, so the internet really wasn't very interesting at that point. Yeah. It was, it was very slow. Yeah. 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 I would get on the internet occasionally when we go to the library or town or something. But. The worldwide wait. Then. Yeah, and it's interesting you bring that up. The reason I left down there was I had a conversation with my father, and he's like, you got to learn Windows 95. You need to come back to the <laughs> oh, yeah, real absolutely. world, you know. And, uh, you know, I took that to heart. Uh, I, I probably could have stayed down there indefinitely. It was such a beautiful job and place to live. Now, do you feel yourself drawn to that kind of lifestyle uh, even now? Absolutely. Yeah? Yeah, as Helen Fisher said, everything comes full circle. Uh, you know, we want to arrive back where we started, except this time we need to know it. <laughs> uh, but yes, I, I, would, I would love to be on a, on a piece of ground and have some nice solar panels go in and grow a lot of my own food, for sure. And what about, your, and what, about what would you do with, uh, with your music in that setting? I would have good internet service and do what all musicians are doing nowadays. Yeah, Probably sure. Play from my living room and write as many songs as I can. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, you are... Um, you're a guy who takes uh, songwriting seriously, not, not, to, not to diminish the calling of, of um, you know, anyone who would choose to put words to music, but I guess I mean to say that um, when it comes to crafting lyrics, you seem to want to put some substance on the table, not just macaroni and chicken fingers. Yeah, I, I, that's fair to say, yeah. Although I do like macaroni and chicken fingers. Sure, I, yeah, yeah. I, <laughs> I believe yeah. that. Yeah, no, I, I, I tend to write, you know, if, if we're talking about how one writes, um, I tend to think about um, places that are, you know, have a lot of feel or like an emotional thing or on the converse, a, I like to do kind of street scenes or like almost like a snapshot of a place like the song Baxter, Kentucky. Mm. It just takes into account all these little stories that in the aggregate like form a feeling about you know what the specter or shadow or light of a particular place is and yes uh, there is intentionality to it and 
there's also a lot of inspiration. My phone is full of hundreds, if not thousands, of four or five line phrases that are just waiting to evolve into full songs. Well, it seems like a life, a life lived on the grid, um, though it can be monotonous and annoying, it, it does seem like there's a lot of stimulation there and a lot of stuff that you can draw upon mm -hmm. for, uh, for songwriting. Um, versus versus the off the grid experience where you have to m sort of draw upon other resources. Very true. Yeah. Do you, do you like? Uh, do you also like um, life on the grid? Are there some things about life on the grid that you that you also really like? Well, yeah, absolutely. Um, I love Netflix, um, <laughs> uh, and I, my, I have a daughter um, that is just all over K-pop. So by proxy, I've become a big K-pop fan. Um, BTS and uh, Blackpink. There's somebody in here who knows what that what that's about, and yeah. I will I will humbly admit that I do not. It's uh, taken the world by storm. Apparently, BTS is bigger than the Beatles uh, in China and uh, you know basically in Asia, and now soon to be in America. Apparently. <laughs> All right. Well, so uh, do you have. Uh, so how old is your daughter? Eleven. Just she turned eleven this summer. Ooh. Past summer. Okay. Has she, has she been doing some uh, remote uh, instruction, some hybrid learning at home, and all yeah. that kind of thing? And, and what's that been like for you as her uh, as her dad? Yeah, uh, it's been good. You know, I, uh, last year when that started, I was much more kind of just watching and seeing how it worked. Uh, she's doing really good. Um, she logs on. She kind of um, is accountable to herself and. She doesn't need a whole lot of oversight from me. Um, uh, I think she adapts to it really well. Um, she's, she's got some friends, you know, that she's able to play with uh, mm. around the house, which is good. You know, there's, I don't know what the long-term effects are or if there are any of not being in a social setting. You know, she misses playing volleyball. She was yeah. a volleyball player. So, you know, we're all in this unique kind of quasi-cave uh, existence right now. Well, it's a big deal. I mean, mm -hmm. right right now, the the so social emotional well being of kids is, um, y you know, is a big concern. When they spend that much time a alone, they they do what fifth and sixth graders do, which is they miss their friends. Yes. And mm -hmm. um, and they miss yeah. connection with teachers, and they miss uh, face to face. They mm -hmm. miss touch. Yeah. Um, and so, uh, so that's a big deal. Is she in fifth grade? She's in sixth. She in just sixth started grade. sixth. Yeah. Oh, all right. Yeah. All right. Great. Great age. Right. Um, right. All right. Well, so let, I'd love to get into some uh, some stuff about your songwriting. Let's uh, let's get back to some music for right now, folks. We have Britt and Patrick Morgan with us on Red Barn Radio. We will come back in just a little while and have some more conversation. So welcome him back, Britt and Patrick Morgan. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> So speaking of songwriting, uh, this song is uh, is really about just the the tapestry of emotions that we all go through living this crazy life and life in general. family are all orange and pink the black threads are when I slept or the times when I blinked but the worst times are the blues and the best our bright green and those memories that I've lost are just the spaces in between well love 
as a blanket is falling off the loom. It binds us together from the end back to the womb. And it's a coat of many colors with a lining made of gold. Quilt of joy and loss and stories left untold. But the worst times are the blues, and the best are bright green. memories that I've lost are just the spaces in between. Just the spaces in between. Sometimes I'm all confused and knotted up real tight. But I know down in my soul nothing's ever just black or white. And so the colors this song are just a pile of tangled threads and I'm here with you and we are warm in bed This next song is kind of a fun song. It's a it's a fantasy song, actually. And uh, it just came to me one day while I was, of all things, cliche, taking a shower. And uh, this is actually the name of my uh, next upcoming album, which is done. I just need to get it printed and released. Uh, but it's called I Want to Start a Band. <laughs> I've got a plan I want to start a band I want it to be The best in history I want to take my time And do it right If it's worth doing It won't happen overnight I want to start a band on him on the drums every once in a while he'll sing a song I want Emmett Lou in that too and Professor Longhead playing walking blues I want to start I 
I won't even face the crowd. I'll just turn myself around. And you'll see me, the great big grin. Cause I'll just be a listener. and roll and rhythm and blues and old time country like Hank used to do I want Joni Mitchell and Stevie Ray and Derek Trucks playing slide for Marvin Gaye I want to start a band think that's a sign that it's divine Robert Hunter and John Prine to put it all into words and to make it rhyme. I want Dr. Ralph to take me to church and save my soul with just one verse. I want to start a band. I want to start a band But I'm just a kid with a radio And my bedroom is a glow With a warm and fuzzy sound. It makes my whole world go around. Thank you. Let me check my tune in real quick. All right, this next next tune uh, I wrote about synchronicity. It's like uh, you know if you're sitting around thinking about somebody and then you check your phone and they happen to text you in that moment. I think it happens more often than we know. This is called When I Think About You. When I think about you, does it mean you're thinking about me? Where the wind runs around, looking for the willow tree. At least in my head, it's the way I want it to be. When I think about you, it's because you're thinking about me. 
There's a space between us, only just a matter of time. Is that why I sit around reading your horoscope sign? You got to use low gear if you ever want to climb. Out of the valley and into the sunshine. Well, my wild strong and my fires are warm. Come and rest ye little darling in my arms. Well, life is short and it don't last too long. I guess it's why I'm singing this song. selling green apples at the side of the road and sometimes I feel I'm carrying a heavy load and one of these days this heart's gonna explode but it's only heavy because it's made of gold well my wild strong and my fire's warm Come and rest ye little darling In my arms Well life is short And it don't last too long I guess it's why I'm singing this song When I think about you It's because you're thinking about me like the wind runs around looking for the willow tree at least in my head it's the way I want it to be when I think about you it's because you're thinking about me when I think about you it's because you're thinking about me when I think about you it's because you're thinking about me Thank you. Sweet. Hey, before we get back to more music with Britton Patrick Morgan, I'd like to tell you what's coming up on Red Barn Radio. Next week, we welcome J.D. Wilkes. Wilkes is uh, an American musician, visual artist, author, filmmaker, and self-proclaimed Southern Surrealist. He is an accomplished multi-instrumentalist. He's recorded with artists such as Merle Haggard, John Carter Cash, Mike Patton, and Hank Williams III. He is perhaps best known, Mr. J.D. Wilkes, as the founder of the legendary Shack Shakers, a Southern Gothic rock and blues band formed in the mid-90s. You gotta be sure and join us for that live stream next week for this amazing artist, J.D. Wilkes. Check out our social media for updates on this upcoming streamed performance, Red Barn Radio, Roots Music, Southern Style. And now on with tonight's Red Barn Radio program. Red Barn Radio is coming to you live on our social media platforms from the Arts Place Performance Hall here in the city of Lexington, Kentucky. Please welcome back Britain Patrick Morgan to the Red Barn stage. So uh, I'm going to play my mandola here on this song. Um, and I referenced this earlier. This is uh, one of the first songs I ever wrote. Uh, and it just uh, kind of came to me. Uh, had a whole lot of uh, almost zen-like qualities to me, uh, feeling-wise, when it, when it presented itself. And um, I've never worked on it or altered it. It was just what was presented to me in a moment and it's called Two Crows.
There were no clouds in the sky today. But there were two crows. And the one crow flew very high, and the other flew not as high. There were no clouds in the sky today, but there was a yellow moon, and the sun said to the moon you are not Well, the bottler made me a wooden knife. The bottler made me a wooden knife. And I put an end to the wild boar's life. Quillaquayquam. Quaddle down. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Switch back over to guitar here. 
this uh, this next tune is uh, it's kind of a derivative of an old fiddle tune called uh, Reuben's Train, and the uh, melody's so cool, and I've jammed with this around bluegrass circles and stuff uh, over the years, and um, started singing to it as well, and I actually just cut this uh, down in Nashville last week, and uh, might release it as a single, or I'm not sure, but this is uh, called Reuben's Song. Nobody's gonna keep me down I'm moving to another town No boss man's gonna get rich off my time I got a long way to go Gonna take it nice and slow And build me a dream of my own Gonna build me a dream of my own Gonna build me a dream of my own Yeah, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Reuben song kind of taps into that romanticized notion of leaving, being on the move. So this next song, I uh, haven't played this one in a while, so I'm glad to play it. Uh, I wrote this song about uh, Mary Lewis Tate, and it was, I can't really explain how the song came to me. I just had this, this uh, 
synergy and almost like connection and spirit with uh, with her. And she was uh, she was a late 18th century or 19th century, late 1800s mystic, um, and she started her own uh, kind of Christian. I guess you'd call it like a congregation called uh, the Do Right Band, and um, she said that uh, Jesus and uh, Mother Mary came to her in a vision, and uh, I just this song just kind of came out, and I wrote this song about her. It's called uh, Mary Magdalena. Words fell from the sky Only she knows why Only she knows why A Van Leer, Tennessee healer Should make your spirit fly But boy, she can make you cry Boy, she can make you cry Mary Magdalena Riding the southern breeze Better get down on your knees Before it's too late You'll be all right She'll wash away your sins tonight And take you by the hand And show you the promised land Raise your whiskey in a toast We all live in a house of ghosts And everyone you see Has to leave eventually In 1903 Downtown Nashville, Tennessee She spoke to the sky Now we all know Mary Magdalena Riding that southern breeze Better get down on your knees Before it's too late You'll be alright Don't worry about your sins tonight She'll take you by the hand you to the promised land
Magdalena, that's off my uh, first album, High Lonesome Throne. Hey, Britton, yeah. uh, I'm wondering, when, when did you start uh, playing the bazooki? Well, you know, it kind of, it kind of uh, came out of having two fat fingers for the mandolin. Uh -huh. and <laughs> my friend, my friend Ray uh, bought one and I was playing on it and I loved the tone of it. It just, uh, there's something about that like kind of baritone or yeah. viola voicing on a mandolin equivalent. It just, it has something about the way it just kind of penetrates the room a little better. Uh, yeah. And I, I fell in love with the tone and I, I kind of committed to, to learning, you know, how to play it better. And uh, this one in particular is like made of plywood. It's not a very expensive one, but it's, it's so robust. You can put a bunch of different tunings on it. So I, I put all kinds of tunings on there, and it's really cool to get drone sounds or, you know, whatever you want to do. I just always assumed that bazookis were tuned with a drone in mind. Yeah, yeah. I don't true. know. They're, I think standard-wise, they're uh, same tuning as a viola. Uh, oh, you know, all right. Because they're, the, cause they're the, uh, just like a violin and a mandolin are the tuning equivalent. Yes, exactly, uh, right. Mandola and viola share the, sh share the tuning. Oh, uh, cool. Yeah. Cool. So okay, so you say man, now you say mandola. So mandola, bazooki. Yeah, pretty interchangeable. Oh, they are. I, yeah. Um, okay. I think there's slight differences. Uh, I think the bazooki has more of a Greek origin. Yeah, I uh, think I think the bazooki is having the bowl. Yeah. The back bowl, yeah. but I don't know. Different resonator. I've heard them. I've heard them uh, called different things. I know uh, my my buddy Daryl says you never want to call it a bazooki if you're in the airport. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, so, that's a yeah. good idea. Okay, yeah. Yeah. so all right, so uh, yeah, we'll get to. So let's get to your some of your friends. Um, we um, we love to have a conversation, um, you know, with songwriters about songwriting, um, but yet you know, for some reason, um, sometimes those conversations can go fairly well, but often they don't go that well because it doesn't feel to me that sometimes songwriters really. Um, know exactly what it is that they want to say about their songwriting. Yeah. Um, but but what do you think that what do you think that is? Is is that? Yeah, I think you know it's such a um, fluid process. It's uh, it's not like you know whittling or something where you can talk about tangible things. Everybody's songwriting, I think, it points to their own truth. Uh, on some level, or their, even their own truth and how they observe the world around them. Not necessarily maybe their emotional truth, but the lens through which they see the world. And it's, uh, you know, you can't put, um, I guess I'm kind of a songwriting anarchist. I, I don't like labels of like structure and A, A, B, B, or formulas to make a hit. I think if you speak your truth and you know we're bombarded with with energy all day long it, uh, your truth in prose is made more resonant and powerful when it's set to melody and so songwriting is kind of a combination of of a meditative tone practice with rhythm that then embodies the words and carries them to ears and it it can just take any form you can imagine from you know a jingle to to incantations, uh, religious music, uh, but to me, it's about speaking your own truth and being vulnerable. I mean, I've written songs that I'll never play for people because I don't have the courage. They're too personal or they're about things in my life, but I, the act of writing them put them in front of me and in some ways, like kind of in a healing way, got them through me and out of me. Uh -huh. And, you know, it's a, it's a way to almost step outside and look back at, at yourself and, uh, get a better understanding of yourself and, and be more centered about, you know, things we feel. Yeah. And so, um, you know, it's funny, we talk about songwriting. I think of, I, I'm, I'm thinking actually about, I'm thinking more about lyric writing mm. um, and storytelling 
than I am about, about the melody that goes along with it. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you can really separate the two when you're in the, the songwriting uh, business, but you, you, have, um, you have spent a lot of time working with, um, working with other people who you really admire um, sure, yeah. on, on songwriting. You, you referenced just a minute ago uh, a good friend of yours who said, who, who said that funny thing about the, the bazooka yeah, in the airport. Yeah, yeah talk, talk to us about your, uh, your friendship with Daryl Scott, yeah, how you Darryl, guys met. Daryl's a good buddy. Um, met him in Nashville 2015. Um, have been a big fan of his writing for a lot of years and really kind of um, I've helped him in his, he has a program actually for songwriting called Song Food. And I've been lucky enough to be like the evening instructor for a few years with that program. Well, tell me how you guys met. How did uh, that, how'd that happen? Yeah, we met actually at Song Food in 2015. And like any kind of micro community that comes from all over the country, uh, that particular group, uh, we formed some amazing friendships. And there's really kind of a lineage, I like to think of it, um, you know, including M Malcolm Holcomb, that that trip too, and love Malcolm's writing. I don't think there's a more uh, vulnerable kind of from the gut writer that I can name other than Malcolm Holcomb. He's just he's another level to me as far as his writing. Um, but yes, yeah, Sarah Trunzo and uh, uh, Casey Lambert, great Alabama songwriter. All of these artists have like continued to like make good music and write and find their own voice. And, um, and they came up through that program? Yes, yes. And, and describe the program. So how, do, how does it work? Well, it's, um, it's, a, it's what's called a songwriting intensive. Um, and it's basically a small group of folks that um, they get together. And I, I do this a lot when I'm co-writing. I do a lot of co-writes uh, in Nashville and also Kentucky with other artists. But it's, it really is about um, getting vulnerable and trying to figure out what it is we want to say a lot of times people have feelings or have had an event in their life or an observation of a loved one's event or something that has a certain aesthetic to it, a certain maybe tragic beauty or maybe a, a certain like joyous beauty. And being able to really flow those feelings into words and create a picture and create a narrative um, it, that's kind of how I songwrite with folks, and that's what that program is about. It's not about uh, learning a formula to make sure. a country hit or anything like that. It's, it's mostly about being able to stand in one's own or find one's own power with respect to their own voice and, and sing, play, get out the words. You don't have to be an expert or a beginner to take part in one of those programs. And, there's a lot of other great artists that do that too. I've worked with Mary Gaucher as well. Mm. Um, she has a, a great songwriting uh, workshop, I guess you would call it. Um, and uh, Alan Rohde uh, has done that as well. Great songwriter, a uh, friend of mine from way back. I've known him forever. Um, a lot of different artists have these and they're, they all have different flavors to them, so to speak. But it's a, it's a place where you can get for people who are wanting to explore songwriting, get comfortable with the idea of what songwriting is and have it be a definition for the person looking to be a songwriter, become a songwriter, or get better at the craft. So can you, can you describe uh, some of the conversations that go on um, hmm. when, uh, when you're writing songs with other people? Can you talk about that some, maybe even like recalling hmm. a couple of specific conversations you might have had in the course of crafting a, a story or a song with somebody? Yeah, um, there. Yeah, I mean, one particular story is. I, I love my buddy Casey, and we've we've written several songs, and his his story is fantastic. I don't have time to go into it. He's he's one of the most interesting guys, but great songwriter, Casey Lambert. You should check him out. He and I wrote um, a little bit of one of the songs I'm getting ready to do in a minute, Bad Tom Smith, um, and our process is. Um, is very much one of fun and and also like we'll talk about a thing and then we'll go deeper and kind of say what is this in itself like what are we actually looking for what's the you know, it's it's like starting a sculpture you know you start with a big block of an idea and then there's this kind of unwritten um, ethos that less is more and being able to say the most with the fewest words with the kind of the 
the best symmetry, not necessarily symmetrically, but the, the best flow. Um, it seems to just say to you when you're done, this is, don't touch it anymore. You know, there's, there's a time to just put it up and say the song is done, because it's easy to try to tinker with it. But once it kind of presents itself and just sounds right and you feel it, it's done. And Casey and I have a good knack of doing that. Like, we're, we're pretty efficient in our ability to do songs that way. Okay, but you, okay so, so you're going to put it away. So you, you guys, so you mean you're good at, you're good at stopping when, when the, the writing of the song has become tedious or forced or labored? <laughs> Yeah, sort of, yes. Is that and and, and yeah. then but then um, but but come on, are, are you going to maybe come back to some of them and tinker with them a little bit later? Well, we for some reason when he and I get together, we it's generally uh, just like a thing. It's uh, it's got its own rhythm where it just starts, <laughs> gets done, and then we leave it be. Now there's definitely other writers I've worked with where it's a over and over again. You know this pronoun, yeah. sure. you know this, and we just go back and keep switching and moving things around but with Casey in particular that's I mean that's the story I think of because it's so uh, it's just a fluid process you know and it's fun too because we usually have a lot of we insert a lot of words we can't say on radio <laughs> sure yeah. so okay your, your friend um, so your friend uh, Daryl Scott who just you know is a, a, such a powerhouse and I've, I'm fortunate to have seen him play a few times you know he um, he did Absolutely, one of the best interpretations I've ever heard of a song I love, and that's that's um, American Tune. No, oh, yeah, you know, yeah. You know, the, Paul the, Simon. The Paul Simon tune, yeah. and that just you know I, I weep when I hear him Daryl Scott do it, yeah. and I I love Paul Simon doing it, but I weep when Daryl Scott does it. And um, I was wondering if if you have uh, given thought to to uh, to doing covers. Maybe you maybe you do many covers. I don't know. D do you like to do covers? Uh, you know, it just depends. Um, there's this uh, in. In music, there's this fine line between uh, being a performing artist and being an entertainer. So um, you get better at reading an audience, and sometimes when you're playing for like maybe a bar or something, you, you'll pull out some covers for sure and um, try to give people something maybe that you intuit they want. Um, and I, you know, I've got quite a few covers I just kind of keep around that. Uh, keep in my head that I play. Yeah. Uh, you always have like a Grateful Dead tune here or there, and, <laughs> you know, some, some different folk songs. But I think it's all about reading the audience. Uh, my preference is to play original stuff. Sure. Um, and, you know, having like listening rooms are such a great forum for that because usually loud bars when you're playing original unheard stuff, uh, there's clinking glass and all that. So it's not like the best forum. But it, it is a line between entertainment and performing artist, you know, and somewhere there's a blurry place in the middle that's a good sweet spot to be as far as, you know, getting good paying gigs and stuff. Yeah, and I was wondering, I was wondering, I think, more about the idea of sort of reinterpreting um, somebody else's song versus, versus covering it because the audience is looking forward to, you know, would like to hear, you yeah. know, um, whatever, Wagon Wheel or something. Right, right. Um, so, yeah. so, I mean, have you, have you done much, have you given much thought to sort of reinterpreting um, tunes uh, for your own voice, you know, because it seems that it seems that a pretty average lyric in the hands of an expressive singer like yourself can can still convey meaning. Yeah, yeah, you know? it, absolutely. Yeah, I do that. I like to do that in real time. Like a lot of times uh, if I've got a f I play with a fiddle player a lot of times I play with Blakely Berger, Ellie Miller, sure. just different folks uh, around Louisville. And we'll we'll take a cover song and completely turn it inside out. You know, we'll jam it out and nice. uh, put some Parliament Funkadelic in the middle of it and then come back to, you know, Mr. Charlie or whatever we're doing. And, oh, all right. You know, just to make it fun for folks. So, yeah, do, I, I like to do that almost on the improv. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. All right, so for fun. And um, I, I would love to hear you talk about uh, some other projects and interests that occupy your time and, and fill up your always interesting life yeah yeah what are some other things you you do with your time well uh, I do have I've been working on this new album that's coming out uh, hopefully late fall uh, so that's been taking uh, time it's still music related um, uh -huh. I've been working on producing some other folks some great artists mostly Kentucky artists uh, records uh, mentioned um, I produced Hill House's release this summer and um, a very fine album by mm, the way yeah yeah they're great talented yeah. players yeah. Um, and my friend Tiffany Williams, who's uh, one of the better 
writers I've ever met. Um, she has won awards for her uh, fiction writing in prose, and that gift translates over into music. Um, I produced her first uh, release, and if it, you haven't, if people haven't, out there haven't heard it, they need to uh, listen to Tiffany Williams' uh, album. I think she's working on a, a new one as well uh, at the moment. Uh, she's great. So I, I do a lot of music-related stuff, um, but I also um, I really have an interest in. Uh, I think I mentioned to you before the show, um, my uncle Paul Hasford. I've been helping him a lot and going down to Payne Hollow which he owns, if people don't know, that was uh, Harlan and Anna's uh, homestead uh, in uh, Milton, Kentucky. Harlan Hubbard. Harlan Hubbard, yeah, Harlan, Harlan and Anna Hubbard, yep. Great artists, great writers, woodblock cutters, they're uh, American icons, and my Uncle Paul was Harlan Hubbard's apprentice for many years in the 1980s, and when Harlan and Anna uh, passed away, they left it to uh, Paul, and he has continued the legacy of living their life uh, down there. He is an incredible artist. He makes art out of found objects along the riverbank. He does art installations for the town of Madison, Indiana. Um, and he has lived essentially off the grid since 1988 in a place you have to hike into and carry your own water. The cistern, that, that's one of the things that we're working on. The cistern cur currently doesn't do a great job of gathering water. So he lives, he's uh, over 70 years old and he's been doing this for 30, 1988, so 30 plus years, 32 years, and it's time to figure out the next step for Payne Hollow for yeah. my Uncle Paul. So we just started a GoFundMe uh, to try to raise some funds to shore up the studio building and uh, maybe get some new roofing down there, clear some trees that are a potential hazard to the uh, cabin. And all the structures down there were handmade by Harlan uh, back in the 50s, 40s, and late 40s, early 50s when uh -huh. Harlan and Anna moved there. Uh, and it's a self-sufficient little homestead. Um, it's, like I said, it's not accessible by vehicle. There's no cell phone service. There's nothing like that. It's, uh, it's quite a little experiment in utopian living. And uh, Paul has just been a beast continuing on by himself with no partner something that Harlan and Anna did um, as a couple for, you know, 30 plus years themselves. And Paul's health? Paul's, uh, I believe he's 71 now. And yeah, and, and uh, how is his health? Um, his health is okay. He has been struggling a little bit. Um, uh, you know, I think he's perfectly capable, but if, if one could uh, visit and see the amount of work that is done down there routinely and what he does even today with the scythe and with his back, and with the gathering of mm -hmm. wood and the cleaning and the uh, the amount of effort, just pure calories burnt, is uh, mind-boggling. And so he's he's at a point where he's having to transition and contemplating what uh, what he wants to do next in life. Mm -hmm. And you know, one uh, one reason we started a GoFundMe and thanks for the forum to talk about it. He uh, he's been this guy that's lived off the grid, so he doesn't have the benefit of social security. He doesn't have the benefit of any safety net. He lives by the labor of his hands. And, you know, what this GoFundMe is, is literally trying to make a little bit of a safety net for him and to get the, the hollow in better shape so that it's not somehow having to come out of his bones and muscles. Um, just to give him some breathing room, to, to get him to a little better place because he is not someone that wants to ask for help. He's a, mm -hmm. he is a salt of the earth guy and an amazing artist and a, you know, a quiet intellect. But uh, this has been a big thing for him and you know, it, for all of us to try to, to try to help is a good thing. Wow. Well, Britton, thanks for telling us about that. Yeah. And thank you for coming on Red Barn Radio. I had such a good time talking with you. I'm looking forward to getting to know you better yeah. in time, and, and uh, we're really looking forward to uh, a couple more tunes from you. What's, what's this next tune, uh, Southern Draw, about? Yeah, this is, uh, this is a song I wrote uh, basically about the way I love. It's a, it's a, I guess it's somewhat paternalistic, and it kind of points to unconditionality, and it... It's maybe rooted in some southern, um, some southern 
ethic about one's heart space and and how we relate to uh, you know relate to someone we love. Uh, it's called Southern Draw. Welcome back, Britton Patrick Morgan, folks, on Red Barn Radio. Thanks. <laughs> This heart of mine is gonna beat till I'm dead. And I try to live by the words in red. And I live each day. Lord, I don't look ahead. Sunshine and rain is my daily bread. I'll try to catch you if you ever fall. Nobody's perfect We're all flawed If you ever need me You can call try to fix all the ways that we lack carrying these monkeys Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, so we mentioned Casey Lambert a minute ago. This is a song, uh, song I wrote with Casey on my back porch. And 
it's, you know, I think somewhere in my family history, I was reading that a great, great, great uncle, Elijah Morgan, was shot and killed by this dude on the streets of Hazard during the French Eversoul uh, feud. This song is called uh, Bad Tom Smith. He'd got away when he moved up to Jackson Town. But Sheriff Combs was on his tail, and he swore to cut him down, down, down. Tell the preacher to baptize me, and don't do what I done. If the governor don't pardon me, I'll be Lord dead and gone. I'll be dead and gone. charge was murder one and he threatened to kill the judge but he cried like a baby on the gallows pole because the whole town held a grudge to baptize me and don't do Lord what I done if the governor don't pardon me I'll be dead and gone I'll be Lord dead and gone I'll be dead and gone Thank you.
We would like to thank Britt and Patrick Morgan for being with us this evening. I'd also like to take a moment to thank our volunteers and staff for their help in making this production happen each and every week. Thank you all for listening to our webcast, watching us on YouTube and Twitch, and those listening to us on the Red Barn network of stations. Thanks to WEKU, Red Barn Radio's official radio partner, NPR for Central and Eastern Kentucky. Listen online at WEKU.org. It's your chance to hear more great live music from Red Barn Radio. Red Barn Radio, roots music, southern style. Red Barn Radio comes to you from our home, the Arts Place Performance Hall in downtown Lexington, Kentucky. Our website has updates and further information on our guests and our program. We are on the web at redbarnradio.com. And now once again, folks, please give it up for Britton Patrick Morgan here on the Red Barn Radio stage. Yeah, thank you all, thank you. It's been great being here. Um, I mentioned uh, some of my favorite friends and writers that I've written with, and I forgot to mention this guy that I wrote this song with. Uh, from Western Kentucky, Christian County, and he's one of the most prolific writers I've ever met. His name is J.D. Grace, and I want to give a big shout out to him. I hope to work more with him in the future, and he's simply a state treasure, J.D. Grace. Um, and this is a song we wrote called Home. It's about this uh, beautiful state that we're fortunate enough to live in. women that ever lived the fastest horses that ever did run and people with nothing but their hearts to give Just keep your muddy boots off of mama's rug. And all the thunder and the lightning we sell it by the jug. be lying if I said the moon ain't been shining every night this week and all my family County. Make music when they speak.
for a better place so they say what hope they give me a big suitcase so I can take all my is blue where I come from Thank you. Britton Patrick Morgan well that's our show for this week folks uh, glad you could be with us you can see and hear Red Barn Radio worldwide as we stream live on the web on YouTube and Twitch Wednesdays at 7 p.m. Eastern in North America be sure to check out our social media for updates to our upcoming schedule. And now from all of us here at Red Barn Radio to all of our friends worldwide, it is our hope that you have a great week. Keep working together to be safe and healthy. And until next time, good night. Good night.